Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Marion County Children's Services Podcast. My name is Elizabeth Moore. I'm the Foster Care and Community Engagement Coordinator. And after a brief hiatus, we are back. And it is April. It's Child Abuse and Neglect Awareness Month. And so what we're going to do is highlight some of those uh, units in our agency again, and hopefully give you a little bit more understanding about what we do here at the agency. So with me today, I have a very special guest, Katie. Do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Katie Folds. I am the intake screener here at Marion County Children's Services, and I work in the intake unit. How long have you been at the agency? Um, Since 2017, I believe. And have you had any other roles other than intake screener? Yes, yeah, so I was the intake and intake caseworker um, for about two years and then I became the screener. Yeah, so you have you bring some experience to intake from yeah. intake, so that's really good. So we're going to go ahead and just dump, jump right in, not dump right in, but <laughs> can you give us, because like I said, we are kind of highlighting the units again. If you want to go back, we will put a link in the description to the original intake podcast episode. So if you can go ahead and give us a quick recap of what does intake mean? When we say you work in the intake unit, what does that mean? So in the intake department, we get all the new calls that come in. Um, so there's a person that will take your report. Um, and then the next morning, sometimes we screen during the day. It just depends. Um, but then we'll screen, we'll hold a briefing. Um, and the intake department, sometimes ongoing or placement workers will come to those meetings and we'll go over the intakes and review them with the um, Ohio guidelines that we have and at that point we'll decide if they're going to get screened in which means a caseworker gets assigned and they go out and do the investigation or if it's screened out then it's just kind of a report that's on um, like our database and we can you know look if there's another report that comes in we can look at all the previous cases once a case is screened in we have 24 hours to make contact with the family the caseworker will go out um, try to make contact and then um, they'll work the investigation and we can have them for up to 45 up to 60 days and then after that you know there will be a decision if we're going to close out the case or if we're going to transfer it for the ongoing services so that's a quick recap yeah. of what intake is. <laughs> I know it's a pretty intense thing when you're talking about 45 to 60 days obviously like there's a lot that, oh, yeah. that goes into that um, and the thing I want to point out is uh, you know, we actually hold child abuse and neglect uh, identification training here at the agency mm -hmm. at least four times a year. We also take that on the road. And I say we, but that's me. That's primarily me. And I work closely with Katie to get some of those pictures and we can talk about oh, some yeah. of those cases and stuff. But some of the things that we talk about in the training, in fact, most of the training comes from, you know, things that we do at the intake unit. And so yeah. one of the things I really want to point out, and this is probably one of our biggest questions that we get when you had said, um, you know, first we have 24 hours to make a decision if we're going to screen in the report mm -hmm. and then 24 hours to try to make contact. Yes. So people always wonder why we aren't out there mm -hmm. right away, right? Yes. And so we are, we, we have those guidelines, but we are trying. So um, obviously we can't dictate when a family is going to be home. So yeah. Or want to work with us too is yeah. another hurdle sometimes. And so a lot of that information, we go in depth in, during the training with that. But um, so, sorry, that was a rabbit trail. Um, information, what, what are some things that if someone thinks they're going to call and make a report, what are some things that you would like as our screener? So it's really helpful if you can get um, whoever holds custody of the child. You know, all the time it's not mom or dad that holds custody. And it's really important for us to know who holds custody. So if you can gather that information, um, their name, address, um, phone number, also if there's any other parent or other children in the home, um, who all is living in the home, um, those are all really helpful, um, you know, pieces. And also, like if there's any current injuries to the child, that's you know something that is really helpful. Um, yeah, that's. Those are just a few. Yeah, those and those are good things. Um, what is the the process? I know we kind of talked briefly about it, but uh, maybe if we can go a little bit more into the screening process, the timelines that you have, and then conversation, um, if you can kind of share a little bit more about some of those guidelines that we have. 
obviously not going too far into yeah. depth, but the you know how how we use them maybe. Yeah, so we look um, at every category, whether it's neglect, sexual abuse, physical abuse, um, all of those have different guidelines that we look. Um, and there's examples, you know, for both either being screened in or screened out, and we really go through them as a group and figure out if they're if they lean more towards a screen in or a screen out, um, and you know, just kind of base our decision off of those guidelines from the state. Yeah, and I one of the things again that I think that is important and that I talk to everybody about during the training is that, you know, those are just guidelines. Mm -hmm. And so and you said like they have examples, but clearly not every single scenario that we're given mm -hmm. is in those guidelines word for word. So uh, and we get a lot of a gray area. So one thing I usually kind of help point out to people in training is that those guidelines have a minimum of 88 interpretations for oh, each yeah. county. And then every person who comes to briefings, which is why we do it as a group, mm -hmm. because everyone has their own interpretations and, and sees those crazy areas differently. So when someone is making a call, um, what, like how, how should they determine it's time for me to make a call? So we always say if you suspect something or you have a weird feeling about something, it's better to just call in and make the report. Um, you know, it's as a mandated reporter or just anybody in general, if you're suspecting that there's something going on with a child or, um, you know, just have concerns, it's really important just to call in because, you know, you might not know that there's been other reports that we have, um, you know, that we can kind of base our decision off of. But just if you suspect something, call it in, even if you think it's little or, you know, it might not get screened in, just make the call because, you know, sometimes it's important to kind of have, you know, other reports from other people. Um, Different pieces to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And it, sometimes that's what it is, is a puzzle and you're kind of getting little pieces to put it all together. So if you suspect something, definitely call in and report it. Um, you know, it's kind of on our end if it gets screened in or screened out. Um, but just call in with any concerns you have for any child. Yeah, that burden doesn't fall on you as a community member to, de to determine if it falls into the Ohio screening guidelines. So we, and like you said, you know, it helps us to kind of have an understanding of what could be going on. Mm -hmm. um, but also I think about some of those open cases that we might have, you know, maybe that's not something that would fit the Ohio screen screening guidelines, but if we're already open with a family, yeah. you know, thinking about things, especially this pandemic, a lot of conversation has been around food shortage. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we're already open with a family and it's not necessarily that we want to go out and tell this family, like you're doing something terribly wrong. Yeah. What we want to do is help and we want to help fill those gaps. And so if we have someone potentially that we're already involved in and you as a friend or neighbor call and say, they don't have any food in the mm -hmm. home. We're not going out and saying, how dare you not feed your children? We're yeah. going to find out how can we connect this family to resources? And that's, um, you know, that's something that I've told some of the clients I've worked with. It's not always a bad thing that Children's Services is coming. You know, we're there to help. So, you know, maybe it's food or if it's, um, you know, different things that we can help with, linking you to counseling or something like that. You know, it's not always a bad thing when we're involved. Sometimes it's, you know, a good thing and we can help the families. Well, and we'd like to think most of the time it's a good thing, <laughs> yeah. like, especially in intake. I feel like there's a lot of linking to the resources, mm -hmm. you know, conversations that we've had and hopefully what we're doing here with the podcast yeah. is um, helping highlight some of those resources that are available in the community. And so, but not everybody knows about them. Mm -hmm. And so we have a great pool of resources in Marion that oh, our, yeah. our great intake workers um, work to connect people to. So definitely. Um, well, it is April. Do you have anything else that you want to add? Maybe you can talk about what do we have going on out front right now? Yes. So April is our Child Abuse Awareness Month. Um, you'll see a lot of blue um, and a lot of things going on. I'm sure Elizabeth, um, our Facebook page, but um, it's just Awareness Month, letting everybody know, um, you know, child abuse is out there. So if you are suspecting something, just you know, call in and as a mandated reporter, you know, you are required to call in if you suspect, suspect something. Um, so just really just awareness that what's kind of going on. Yeah. And there's so much, I feel like, especially when we talk about intake and granted it's because probably because my roots were in intake, yeah. but I feel like, 
you know, we can go on for hours talking about what you guys do and, mm -hmm. and especially in the month of April, how you serve the community. So, um, Katie, I don't know if you've ever watched an episode of my podcast. I have watched some of them. So, so you know that there's usually like a unprompted, unscripted question, right? Um, I have been told, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll ask you the question and then I'll talk to everybody for a minute and then we'll come back to you. So it gives you some okay. time to think about your answer. All so right. what is it that made you want to go into child protection? So you think about that. Okay. And then I'll talk to everybody for a second and just kind of give you a reminder that April is Child Abuse and Neglect Awareness Month. It's a great reminder of how you can help protect kids in the community. We will highlight information on child safety during um, the month of April, usually year round, on our Facebook page. And you can always call if you have any questions. So we give you a lot of you know, reference if you wanna call and make a report. But if you ever have a question, if you ever have anything you just wanna talk about when it comes to child protection in the community, feel free to give me a call. I will put my information down below, which always makes me feel really cool when I say that. Like, comment down below, I'll put my information down below. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me. I'd love to um, help answer some of the questions you might have. And then if you feel like you need to make a report, give us a call and you can have a great conversation, mostly with Katie. I don't think we actually <laughs> specified what screener means so um typically when you're calling to make those reports this is the face on yes. the other side of the phone <laughs> that you get to to talk to so yes. what made you want to go into child protection so i was a teacher um, before this a preschool teacher and i just really wanted to get more involved in like families and helping um you know i had a friend that had worked here and just kind of hearing about what they do um i that's just really i just really wanted to work with families more and kind of help um with things they're struggling with or need assistance with so that's really what brought me here so i want to just say something about that real quick because you know i can't just keep my mouth shut but i think that's interesting that you phrase it like that because a lot of people that i talk to out in the community mm -hmm. say they want to work at children's services because they want to work with kids but uh -huh. really what we're doing yeah. is working with the family yeah so. and that is um you know it is really with the families and really when i kind of came i thought it would be working with the children a little bit more but i mean you are working with the children but really you're working with families as a whole um so that's well, kids are part of a family, yep. right? So that makes a lot of sense. So, <laughs> well, that does it for us. If you have any questions or any ideas for future topics for our podcast, uh, definitely get in touch with me. Again, I'll have my information down below and probably in the description as well. And as always, have a great week. Thanks Thank for you. watching.